Hash. Communism, the only path to happiness for the hardworking masses. Communism essentially means sharing. Uh, the greater the degree of sharing, the higher the value of the resources. The most effective way to maximize resource value is through sharing, which is the essence of communism. Humans are inherently selfish, often resisting communism, especially when they possess even a small amount of wealth. A person with a mere bicycle is reluctant to share it, reflecting human nature. When one has not only material wealth, but also power, status, and reputation, they desire to live better than those around them, thus satisfying their vanity, making them even less willing to share. Since Karl Marx founded the theory of communism, the movement has often been pushed violently, harming the interests of the propertied class. Marx's theory had many flaws and combined with the blind actions of its practitioners led to the failure of the communist movement. Hence, it's understandable why people instinctively dislike and resist communism. From historical experiences, it's clear that those who demonize and resist communism do so based on their lessons. Historical communist movements were contrary to true communism, which is meant to be elegant, gentle, and civilized, not coercive, violent, or depriving others of their property. Throughout human history, the ones who have suffered the most are the hardworking masses, the ordinary people. Despite thousands of years, their situation remains largely unchanged. They are still the bearers of suffering. Having lived in Asia, uh, Africa for over a decade, and North America for nearly four years, and having spent several months in an indigenous tribe in Oceania, I deeply understand the pain and worries of the hardworking masses. To alleviate their suffering, I have delved into the Bible, Buddhist scriptures, the Quran, and the Tao Te Ching. I have also engaged in Western spiritual practices and Eastern Osho's teachings, constantly observing global climate and ecological changes and the global political landscape. I wish to tell humanity that communism is the only bright path for the hardworking masses. What is communism? Theoretically, I have explained some aspects, but no theory can fully reveal the essential characteristics of things or analyze their full content and extension. Only by creating a tangible entity that people can observe and delve into will they fully understand it. Therefore, I and the Chanyuan Celestials have created the Life Oasis, formerly the Second Home, which is a thorough representation of communism. To truly understand communism, one should visit and experience the Life Oasis created by the Life Chanyuan. Many equate communism with utopia, which is not entirely wrong. Utopia is a prototype of communism. Historically, utopias have almost always failed. To understand the reasons for these failures, I analyzed historical utopias, especially the New Harmony created by Owen in the United States. I wrote an article analyzing its core issues, concluding that the lack of a clear understanding and blueprint among utopian leaders led to their failure. They navigated blindly, ultimately drowning in the tumultuous waters. To distinguish from historical communist theories and practices, I refer to the life oasis created by the life Chanyuan as Shuifeng style communism. This form of communism can resolve territorial disputes between nations, prevent the overconsumption of natural resources, address government corruption, reduce crime by 75%, and enable people to live peacefully and joyfully. It can eliminate war, unrest, refugees, and famine, have the suicide rate, and ensure that 98% of people live happy, free, and fulfilling lives. Who are the hardworking masses? The hardworking masses are those who toil their entire lives for basic necessities, yet still struggle. They are the ones who face continual suffering, envy, and respect government officials on the surface while harboring deep resentment. They are the ones who labor hard and wish for a better life but remain discontented and anxious. Despite their efforts, they cannot escape the cycle of suffering unless they adopt the production and lifestyle modes of Shuifeng style communism. Moral education is fragile and ineffective. Historical moral teachings, whether from Christianity, Buddhism, Islam, Confucianism, or other sages, have failed against the harsh realities of life. Modern China is an example where moral education did not prevent widespread corruption among officials who were ostensibly educated in Mao Zedong thought. For the hardworking masses to lead peaceful lives, moral education alone is insufficient. All sorts of inspirational teachings and spiritual sayings are mere anesthetics. The current Buddhist preachings are especially narcotic. 
True well-being for the hardworking masses requires establishing a system, a procedure, that guarantees their happiness. Claims to cage power in the system, ensuring officials dare not, cannot, and do not want to be corrupt sound good. But if the system itself fosters corruption, it cannot restrain it. China's history of regime changes has shown that without changing the system, the plight of the masses remains unchanged. Unless traditional production and lifestyle modes are abandoned, communism, the only path to happiness for the hardworking masses. Communism essentially means sharing. The greater the degree of sharing, the higher the value of the resources. The most effective way to maximize